So, good morning everyone. I'm just going to say a few words of welcome then hand over to Tim Crawford. So my name is Dave Durer. Um I've been involved with the, the project right through, but today I'm also your host um, here in Wolfson College. So I want to welcome you on behalf of the college. Um, and also the college's digital research cluster. So to, to give a little bit of context, uh, as you can see, we're, we're not one of the sort of quotes, Harry Potter colleges. <laughs> um, Wolfson was founded in 66. Uh, the first president was Isaiah Berlin. It's founded on, founded on very egalitarian principles. We don't have a high table. You rarely see formal dress in, in, in this college. We do, however, have a Latin motto, um, which I have to read. <laughs> um, it sounds it's fantastically like the title of a, a, of a sort of a science fiction movie from the, the Roman period or something, but Humani nil alienum, uh, which comes from a longer quote, and I think this is very appropriate for today, which means, I am a human being, in my opinion, nothing to do with human beings is foreign to me. Uh, and that this really establishes the, the principle of, um, of interdisciplinarity in, in Wolfson College, and the college is well known for its art and its architecture and music. It's fantastic having TMUs here today. The Digital Research Cluster is a sort of an informal grouping of like-minded and interested people uh, within Oxford around the theme of digital research, digital, digital scholarship. We have a number of research clusters and they, they're all cross-cutting, um, so that they don't correspond to any particular department or, or discipline. We have life writing, which is led by Hermani Lee, the um, outgoing president of the college, uh, ancient worlds, quantum. Now, these are things that uh, occur across the whole of the university come together in college. So uh, we have a number of digital research cluster events um, this, this term and, and lined up for next year. This is actually, uh, you know, today is Friday and we're having transforming musicology. Next week we have uh, Monday to Wednesday looking at um, uh, enabling digital scholarship. So um, we have a few days here in, in, in Wolfson. Um, just one, one housekeeping thing to note. Uh, we are videoing and we asked the speakers to sign consent forms. Uh, we're not planning to video members of the audience, <laughs> uh, so we haven't asked you to sign consent forms. And the camera is positioned so that um, David will confirm this. You can see me and no members of the audience whatsoever. Uh, but when you ask questions, um, that will be on the audio recording. And if you introduce yourself, then we have a good record of, of those questions. But we won't be pointing the camera at you because it's behind you. Um, <laughs> and the other thing is David Lewis may take some informal photographs through the event. If anyone doesn't want the photograph taken or the photograph used, please let us know, and that's absolutely fine. Good. So with that, let me hand over to, to Tim and, and look forward to a, an excellent day of discussions about transforming musicology. And, and if you actually think you're in at Wolfson to attend the event called Constitutions in Crisis, I think that's a different room. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Tim. Thanks very much, Dave. Um, uh, the first thing I want to say is to explain a little bit of, about the history of our title, Transforming Musicology. Um, we put together really the bare bones of the project uh, to, to answer a call um, for large projects which the AHRC hadn't done before and uh, this particular one was under the aegis of um, digital transformations. One of our speakers has just arrived and I'm very glad to see him because I've been nervous about his travel prospects. Uh, uh, but um, the, uh, the point about Putting together a large project is the, the last thing you think of is the title. And of course, about a week before we had to submit, um, I was writing down, as you do, uh, trying to work out an acronym from all these, uh, all, all the things that we might want to include in the project. And they got more and more obscure and abstruse. And then we had a meeting with Dave, and he said, Why not just call it Transforming Musicology? <laughs> because then the panel members will remember it. So there's a tip. It, and I, I believe that's one of the main reasons why we got the grant, actually, is because they had, you know, it fixed in people's minds. So that's a tip for anybody going on to um, uh, make their own applications for, for grants, um, uh, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, the... Uh, I think I'd better actually say another thing that I want, uh, um, a kind of a housekeeping y thing. Um, all the speakers, I'm not going to introduce you formally because I, I find that very inhibiting and uh, a sort of un unfriendly kind of thing to do. So please, before you speak, say who you are and whatever you want to say about your background. 
uh, very briefly, that would be very, very helpful. Now, I have to say that we have got um, one gap in our programme. Uh, that is that uh, 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 Nick Harley, a uh, PhD student, um, who was due to speak after coffee in the afternoon, uh, is unable to come because he's got flu. And he didn't want... Well, A, he didn't feel he was able to come, and B, he didn't want to give everybody else flu, so I think it was probably very sensible of him not to come. Apart from that, um, the programme is as you see it here. Uh, I'm sorry that uh, a, a couple of celebrities uh, couldn't, couldn't actually make it on the day. Andrew Prescott and Lawrence Dreyfus, uh, neither of them was able to actually to come in the event, and uh, uh, that was a kind of a last-minute thing and nothing we could do about it. But I think we've still got a very interesting programme, and I'm so grateful to our um, speakers for um, uh, putting aside the time to come uh, to Oxford in this horrible weather. Actually, this, I say horrible weather, there's beautiful sunshine now. It's very changeable. Um, just moving on from here, uh, just, uh, just quickly, um, if the presentation is going to work. Uh, OK. Just... To remind people who don't already know, uh, the, the way this uh, project is made up, it was very broad. I'm not going to read out all the names. I don't see any point. You can see it has a broad spread as opposed to going deep into uh, the subject. So this is one of the reasons why uh, 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 we, we were able to put on an event like this, which is so um, sort of various in its makeup. Um, we also, uh, there's one very important person at the top of this list, is Richard Lewis, who is sitting at the back there, who was the project manager on the uh, project until about a year ago, or a bit more than a year ago. And I've been desperate ever since he left, because, of course, the project, it ran out of its three years of funding. We got some, uh, an extension, but there was no funding attached to that extension. And... Uh, it makes me realise how important a project manager is. So that's another thing. If you're going to put on a big project, have a project manager. It's essential. Um, we, there are three PhD students attached to this. Uh, one of them is here, Carolyn Rindfleisch, if you'd like to put your hand up. So if anybody wants to talk to Carolyn about her work on Wagner leitmotifs and how they uh, fit into a, a digital concept of musicology, uh, that would be... Um, I'm sure she'd be very happy to talk to you. Um, OK, uh, just a bit of the, uh, the sort of um, blurb that we fed to the AHRC. We felt that the, the project was kind of around this, the, the interconnection of three essential elements that we felt needed work. And uh, musicology was an established discipline. It's not actually a very old discipline. It's been around for about 150 years in various forms. Um, I, as you all know, it's a very multidisciplinary discipline. It is very multidisciplinary. Um, anyway, in itself, but I think the, the, the two... Of, well, one thing that has really become uh, apparent is that this emergent and... and uh, well, emerged, I think, a sub-discipline of basically audio engineering, computer science, I don't know what, um, music information retrieval is going to play an important role in the future of musicology, whether you like it or not. That's, the reason for that is that music has, whether you like it or not, been transformed. The music industry has been transformed. The production of music, the performance of music in certain categories, not in every aspect, but uh, is, is trans has be already been transformed and is likely to be transformed more in the future by digital uh, technology. Um, so it was important. Music information retrieval is just a, a label we attach to all that. But um, we were aware that um, in order to make, to, to I hate use this word, but leverage the um, those essential uh, uh, affordances that, that music information retrieval gives us, we have to connect to the concepts and the, un and the, and the human understanding that uh, musicologists already have and to make sense of it via something which we at 
at this, that early stage, just labelled semantic framework. And that's something that the Oxford E Research Centre has um, made a, a speciality and, uh, well, they're, they're forging ahead in, in, in doing this kind of thing for other humanities projects as well as musicology. So, um, uh, this is rather sluggish and I'm not quite sure why. Why won't you go to the next slide? Okay. Oh, right. Um, definitions. What I mean by musicology is very simply a deep un human understanding of music. And I, that, in other words, I include in the term musicology music analysis, music theory, ethnomusicology, even though we don't actually touch that, but really in a serious way in the project, in an explicit sense. Um, it, it, th th those all are part of it. It's also about performance to a large extent um, in, in the sense that an understanding of music uh, in, in the sense that, that I mean it is essential in order to perform it. Okay, uh, so, sorry, I don't know why this is... Why? Okay. Uh, obviously, you know that, that uh, music information retrieval is about computational analysis and matching of music. Uh, and in semantic framework, there is this global exchange of cultural concepts of music. Uh, this all really has to be understood in the context of various communities um, who have interest in, in all this. And in, in, in the case of musicology, in my broader definition, I don't just mean people who call themselves musicologists in who's who, or who um, actually are paid to do musicology. I also think that enthusiasts uh, often know more about a particular topic than the professionals. I mean, we, we all, I'm sure, know people who don't do musicology uh, as their profession, who know more than we do about certain aspects of music, and that, that's always going to be the way. And taking that a bit further, there can be hobbyists, people who, who, who only do it um, intermittently for pleasure, purely for pleasure, um, uh, are really embraced within the, uh, the, the, the sort of uh, community that can do this kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> seems to take about eight clicks for me to get anywhere. All right, okay, that's fine. Um, obviously, uh, it's fairly clear who the uh, community of, of particular interest in music information retrieval is. Uh, computer scientists, audio engineers, data scientists, the music industries. But of course, they're all really serving uh, the man in the street, the person who sits on the bus with their, 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 um, their phone um, streaming uh, uh, from whatever service they want. I mean, you know, this is, this is in, essentially they are making connections with everybody. Uh, one mustn't forget that. Um, and of course, the semantic framework has use for the project team, other disciplines, the global public, in fact, anybody. So um, I thought I'd show you those just to give you an idea of wh where we came from at the beginning. Uh, I haven't I don't want to take up much more time. Um, I'm not what I'm not going to do, and there is no real place in this program for, for a a blow-by-blow blow account of what we did in transforming mu musicology. The the website that you see at the bottom there should give you all the information you need. It's in a process of transition at the moment, but I believe that um, if you go to this URL, you will be able to find. Um, information about w what we did. It may not be complete at the moment, but I don't know. Um, uh, but it will certainly be the place to start. Okay, um, it's very important aspect of our project, of our, this large project, was the mini, mini projects, uh, which um, were organized by Alan Marsden, who is sitting there from Lancaster University. Uh, and they, we have four of these, uh, the first one, you're going to hear from Nick Collins later on. Uh, he's sitting there and he will be uh, telling us about what he's done uh, analysing large amounts of um, electronic music. And, 
secondly, there was uh, a, 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 actually a music metadata uh, uh, project uh, connected with concert programs uh, and other kinds of musical ephemera, uh, which uh, has been actually very active, and they, they are doing all kinds of interesting things, and uh, it, it, they're not actually represented um, uh, explicitly today in this program, but again, we've, we've had various activities uh, which, in which they've been involved during the course of the big project. The third one is actually really fascinating. It's using uh, absolutely standard... Um, internet search techniques to see how much you can find about really early music. Uh, the, 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 um, the particular topic was looking for the Latin texts of, um, I think they were 11th century uh, sequences, is that right? Or, was it or conductus? Conductus, so it's a particular uh, verse form that was set to music frequently. And amazingly, they've been able to... The, the, the internet has these Latin texts uh, uh, in abundance. You wouldn't, it's really quite surprising that, that uh, some, some of the earliest uh, liturgical texts are available. So that was, that, was, uh, that, that one. And finally, um, a, a, well, this is our connection with ethnomusicology. Peter Yankov Yankovic is sitting at the back, um, and uh, Muniba Kokua. Uh, did the, uh, this um, uh, project on seeing how well we can just, well, I, I, you, you, you've got a poster where you'll be able to explain um, exactly what you were trying to do, but the, uh, the idea, as I understood it, was see whether you can distinguish the style of different players of Irish traditional music, flute music, um, from the audio. And, and that, as you can tell, that's a pretty challenging um, idea. Okay, I think that's basically the end of my presentation and I think we can move on to our first speaker.